Joshua Aaron. Today I'm going to be reviewing Defender of the Crown for the NES. Now, this particular version was actually based on the Amiga 2 version, which was the original release for Defender of the Crown back in the 80s. And I remember playing this game when I was for always having a difficult time with it, and I'm going to be explaining why exactly. So without further delay, let's get going here. Now first off, this is a game from Ultra Games, and it was also made by Konami as well, and licensed by Nintendo, as it says here on the screen. I don't even need to read it, just read it. And here we go. That uber lame beginning music. And 8-Bit Florian is fine. In the year of our Lord, 1149, when the king returned from the Holy Land, knights united. Great warriors who had carried him to victory over the infidels. Basically, this takes place after he returns from Jerusalem. You're, you're kind of wondering what's going on there. And these uh, four lords that you're about to see get their own castles. That's really what's going on here. First off, let's start with uh, Wilfred of Ivanhoe. Seriously, he looks like somebody just walked in on him while he was trying to get dressed. Pretty much the same story goes for Jeffrey Longsword here. He just, looks, he just looks like somebody walked in on him while he was on the toilet. And then, of course, we have the lead singer of the 80s hair bland flock of seagulls, Cedric or, of Rutherford. Or maybe that's, his, maybe that's the ancestor, I don't know. And speaking of ancestors, we have the ancestor for John Lennon here, Wolfric the Wild. So you can pretty much pick your choose your character that you want to play as. Um, I usually typically go with the lead singer of Flock of Seagulls here. So he stops to visit Robin of Loxley in Sharon Forest with really bad news. Basically, the king has been assassinated and the crown has disappeared. And each side is accusing one of the others, the Normans versus the Saxons. Normans are assembling armies, and Saxons will fight them. Each accuses each other of killing the king and stealing the crown, and the whole country plunges into civil war. This is where you come in. And so you start off by getting a little bit of income, and then it takes you directly to this map screen here, and you get to plan out your strategy accordingly, but it's more than just strategy. Almost pure random. I'm going to be going into that here in just a bit. And you get this little sub-menu here where you can move Garrison from your castle and into your army. I always usually start with putting about half my Garrison into my army and then start choosing my land. So far so good. You get a little more gold for every single land that you take over. And you can even drop off soldiers in said land and then head straight back to your castle. And then from there, you can even buy you can even buy your army. You can de de decide if you want to buy a catapult, a knight, or even just more soldiers. And yeah, you can even buy castles, but you need a place to put them. And of course you need 20 treasure, which I don't have right now. It's still a little early in the game. But well, we'll definitely spend the money on a catapult right now. I'm gonna want it later. And then every once in a while you get a little cutscene like where it starts by saying, Meanwhile, disasterly Norman rogues have kidnapped the ward of Geoffrey Longsword. He promises to grant you the hand of the fair lady Rosalind and its joining of your two kingdoms should you succeed in her rescue attempt. Now here's where the rescue attempt comes in. You get these little sprites that um, barely even look like the cover of a game. And the swordplay here, oh my gosh, the swordplay. It's just awful. It looks like two people just taking a freaking stick to each other and just poking it with them. What were they, what were they thinking? And yeah, I gotta cut some slack because it is only 8-bit, but still. 
Alright, finally inside the castle here. I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. Urgh! Come on, bring it! My mom pokes better sticks than you. So now you can see Jeffrey Longstorm is a little pissed off because he just lost his chance of uh, getting married, which, and on top of that, because getting married, you know, a little bit of the usual stuff that comes with marriage, but all, all this really comes to head on the battle screens here. And oh my gosh, talk about random. You can hold your ground, you can do fierce attacks, you can even bombard your enemy, but honestly, with my numbers, I think I better just hold my ground here. Sometimes, sometimes you win, and sometimes you just lose no matter how many guys you have in your army. You can even decide to raid somebody's castle if you wanted to. And this is where it gets interesting. You get to see the sprites with... You get to see the sprites with sticks again! Yeah, that's not gonna be fun. Alright, I'm gonna get him this time. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Come on. Come on, bring it. Bring it, Ice Shark. Bring it. Come on, let's go. Come on, bring it. Come on, let's go. Come on. Keep him coming. Keep it coming. I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet. I'm gonna get you this time. I'm gonna get you. Alright, I'm here in the castle. Again. Right, come on, bring it. Bring it. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Mm. Come on. Oh, come on, please. Come on. Get down here then. Seriously, you think that's enough sticks? They don't even look like swords, they look like sticks! Alright, got him this time! The tournament gets completely random too. Oh, wait, what? You can't afford it? Okay, I first started playing this game when I was four years old. And, uh, that's the very first time I've ever seen, I've ever tried to call a tournament, and you can't afford it. Moving on. Gotta leave at least ten guys at home. Alright, I'm coming back for the blood. I'm coming for you! Oh, looks like somebody just lost their castle. See, that's what happens. During the battle's rage across the land phase, it's completely at random. They could be attacking the ally of yours, or they could even possibly attack you. It's whichever comes first. As the dog has just left the bed. Anyway. Oh yeah. Now that... Now I'm near the enemy's castle. This is where it gets interesting. You go back to your castle. This is where I, this is why I kept the catapult there. I'm gonna need it. Now real quick, if you remember at the beginning, he pledges your aid at least three times. And well, we gotta see Robin Row first. Decrease your request. Alright, moving onward. Finally. You get to take the enemy's castle. Coming for you. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. You assemble your army and prepare for a long... A Deros siege? Okay, whatever. 
Anyway, it's basically saying you're surrounded by enemy castle. Alright, here is where the fun begins. You get to take the boulders. Oh, fuck. I didn't realize I wanted to. You get to take the boulders and you put them through the castle walls. Alright, now you got three days left of siege, meaning, guess what? Now is where you really start attacking. You get to use the Greek fire, you get to throw some disease inside the castle. I like a little bi biological warfare myself, so I'll use disease first. <laughs> See what I mean? I know it's cheap, but honestly, the game in and of itself is cheap, and you're going to find out why later. Robin's plan works, cutting the size of the enemy's army significantly, and we go to battle. Alright, let me get you guys. Get me. some land, I also lost it. Oh, well. <laughs> He's happy again. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got the enemy's castle now. What of it? Yeah, who the man? So now, obviously, I need another catapult because the one I had uh, obviously got used up and thrown away. Which, actually, in this game is pretty normal, so... Basically, every time you attack, you gotta buy another catapult and then do it all again. It's rinse and repeat. Oh, and the computer tends to get cheap here. Is when they start attacking your castle, one of the castles that you just got. That's when they start getting cheap. And it goes from a field battle situation to a crossbow situation. You know, I gotta be honest, I'm pretty disappointed. Can't they do that with the regular field battle part? I mean, come on. You have these two life bars here, which indicate your amount of armies. And when you get defeated, that brings up this screen, because that life bar completely ran out, so you just get defeated. And then you lose the castle. As is burning. Oh, you cheap... If you thought freaking Flock of Seagulls hairband lead singer ancestor was pissed off before, oh yeah, no, now he's furious. And I can't say I blame him. Nah, you know what? I can't take your castle, but I can definitely take his treasure. Right, yeah. Come on, oh, I'm gonna get you. Oh, I'm gonna get you. Come on, come on, bring it. Come on. I'm gonna get your treasure. I'm getting your treasure. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna get your treasure. Ugh. Yeah! Told you I was gonna get his treasure! Oh. Nobody's home? Nobody's home! Okay. Uh, this castle's mine now. I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, lure him with the castle, and then just mm, get him right there. Got it. I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. Come on. Yeah, try and take this castle. Let's see what happens. Mm, 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 mm. Come on. Come on, bring it. Bring it. Ice skirt. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Damn it. Well, can't from can't blame you for trying. This gets really interesting when you call it a tournament. And ooh, let me tell you, this is an experience in of itself. You get to choose which lord you want to compete with in the jousting tournaments. Or you, if you have land, you can choose to compete for land or fame. You know, I got a little too much riding at stake with the land. I think I'm just going to go with fame for land. Alright. Let's see who's still on the field. I think Pope is actually. So, yeah, I'm 
I'm gonna get him first. Alright, so, horns blow, the jousters are lining up in their place. Now the trick is with this one, you wanna make sure that you don't hit the horse. You wanna hit the knight, you don't wanna hit the horse when you're joust. But let me tell you, the controls are just... Oh, when it comes to this, they're either too loose or too tight. You either hit the guy or you hit the horse. Or you don't hit at all. And instead they hit you. Just like what happened there. Also, is that supposed to be the sound of sprinklers going, or is that just the wind? And that's what happens when you lose. When you lose, to say it's a long day. That's the end your day in the list of at, this at Ashby, where the champion got crowned. But you will, but you vow to return and bring glory to your name. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> here's where the computer gets really cheap. Is when they start attacking your home castle. This is when the computer gets nasty. Okay, you wanna play dirty? Come on. I will fight you to the last. I will get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna stay here. I ain't going nowhere. Come on, bring it. Bring it. I ain't going nowhere. Come on. Urgh. I'm gonna get you. 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 Ooh. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Oh! And this is what happens. When you lose, you get a defeat screen, High Castle Cumbria, and it'll say your war is over. And essentially, it means game over, your castle's burning down, you meet Robin and show it for us, and. later, you follow them to freedom, the men of Sherwood. You will continue the struggle against the Norman oppression, slipping away from the burning castle you vow to keep fighting until the Saxon rules the land. You gotta be kidding me! But don't get me wrong, I, I don't mind the knight not giving up and all. Probably one of the more unfair gameplays I've ever seen! Like, what? The hell? But when you die, you're pretty much starting all over. Yeah, come on, get him! Get him this time! Come on! one guy do you? Come on, get it! There we go! Whew. I so thought I was gonna lose that one. Whew. Again, you really gotta hold you really gotta kinda hold your breath on that one because those battlefields, they're completely random. It's almost as if, okay, well guess what? You're gonna win, you're gonna win, you're gonna win. Oh guess what? I got one guy left and no, you lose. It does that sometimes. I'm not even making this up. Okay. Oh look! Another tournament! You don't say! Okay. Calling for a turn now. Hmm. My Chamberlain in Dark Crystal. Hmm. I'm going with the Oh, I got the horse, you son of a bitch! Ugh! See, I hate to control in the tournament, because you either miss them and hit nothing at all, 
Or you hit something, and instead of killing your opponent, or instead of knocking your opponent off the horse, you kill a freaking horse! That means you lose all your shit! Ugh! Makes me so mad. I hate these controls. I, I really do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's too rich. That's too rich. I, I get it. He lost the... Uh, what happened was he lost all of his lands, all of his uh, knights, all of his soldiers. Loses everything but the little bit of gold that he gets from the land. And he looks like... He looks like one of the homeless. <laughs> Ah, uh, help me with this one. Okay. You know what? You all want to have that, that guy be my guest. I will not stop you. You have to take over the whole map? You're all I can't do it? anymore to freaking deal with this game. I mean, it freaking sucks! It's all random based. You either win or you don't. You either take over the field of battle or you just freaking lose. You either you either defend your castle or you lose the castle. Ugh. Can't even. It freaking sucks. That's the bottom line. I mean, great effort by Nintendo to import something from Amiga 2, but let's be honest. It sucked on the Amiga 2, and it sucks on the NES. Fuck that game. <laughs>